DM Developing Musicianship Online. Hello, and welcome to DM Online. Today, we're going to explore the idea of melody and the sorts of knowledge you need to be able to form basic melody lines. We're going to focus on the song Macarena and understanding how it is that such a popular song uh, has gained popularity. Is it to do with the melody? Is it to do with something else? Hopefully by the end of this you can make that decision for yourself. Uh, so let's go. So the first and most important thing to understand about melody is the idea of tonality because tonality affects the bass, it affects the chords, it affects the melody line of course and any solo that an instrumentalist might play. So you'll see on your screen a piano keyboard and the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C have been labelled. Now those notes form a scale and that scale has the tonality of a major key. So this is the C major scale. Now this is the most common scale for a beginner piano player to play because it's the only major scale that uses just white notes on the piano. So things like Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and things like that nearly always written in C major for a beginner. Now the reason why it sounds major is to do with the pattern that is formed with the black notes. So I'm going to use a little bit of terminology to explain this. The word whole tone or tone is actually means the same thing. Semitone or half tone also means the same thing. I'm going to use tone and semitone for this. So when you skip a black note you are hearing the gap of a tone. So from C to D is a tone. D to E is a tone. When you miss a black note, so between E and F there is no black note. So that gap is a semitone. And then tone, 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 B to C is a semitone. Okay, so those series of spaces or the pattern of larger and smaller gaps between notes forms the sound of a major scale. If we were to transfer to a different note, say so let's say G, and replicate that pattern of large and small gaps, then we would find the sound would still be a major scale, just starting on a G. But in order to do that, we need to actually use some of the black notes. I'm not going to get any more into it than that, okay? So we're in C major. If we were to write C major down on a stave, then you would be looking at something that looks like this. Now at this point, that curly thing at the front, the treble clef, is an important factor here. Because the, without the treble clef, those notes that are there have a different name. They're not C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. But as long as you have a treble clef at the start, those notes will always be C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now you'll notice that they go in the space and then the line, then the space and the line. That's important too. And you'll also notice the C has a line through the middle of it. Another thing that's important, and I'll explain in a moment. So here is a visual guide for how to figure out what note names are when you're looking at music. All the spaces have the name that spells the word face. So if this is my five lines, then there's a space F, space A, space C, space E skipping over all the lines. Okay, if I stuck to the lines, then I would get like an acronym for every good boy deserves fruit. And if you remember that, then you can work out music even if you're not particularly fluent at reading it. Uh, when you go below the stave, then we start extending the stave with extra lines. And those lines are called ledger lines. So C is an example of that, where we've gone below the stave and now we need to add more lines to the bottom of the stave and those lines are added and then the note heads sit either across them or below them. So there you see C, then B sits under a ledger line, A, we have two ledger lines, G sits under those two ledger lines and so on. It gets a little bit hard to read when you get lower than a G. Uh, if you think about the piano keyboard and the relationship between this and the notes on the stave, this also makes a little bit of sense if you think, if I move from F to A, I've skipped over the line and on the piano keyboard I've skipped over a key. A to C, I've skipped over a key. 
on the, on the A to C in the music, I've skipped over a line. So there's that visual and physical reference on a keyboard to see how the music directly associates with where it's pictured on the stave. So there you see the lines, E, G, B, D, F, and of course we're skipping the spaces, so we're skipping keys. So we're back to C major. All right, in order to understand tonality, you need to understand that if you have a scale called C major, that C is the most important note. Now the next most important note is five notes higher, C, D, E, F, G. So G is called the dominant if we will talk about technical names, but the G is the next most important note. And then we'll find that the use of E's is quite common because um, that's part of the C chord. And I'm not gonna talk about chords today, but you just have to believe me that E is an important note in the C chord. So here's the notes to Macarena. And this is really a demonstration of where pop music is today in terms of melody writing. So you'll see it's very rhythmic. It uses a lot of the same note name. So in this case, this is the verse. It's going E, F, E, 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 G, E, 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 F, E, 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 D, C. So the constant note happening through the verse and also through the chorus of this, and this is common in most popular music. Now, the other thing that's common is the use of those important notes I was telling you about, the C and the G. The reason why a melody writer needs to be conscious of the fifth and the, the C, which is the main note, is because if you leave a phrase on the fifth, the music will sound like it wants to continue. So if you look at the first line, when I dance, they call me Macarena, it's going to continue, so they've left it on the G. And the boys, they say, Kesta Buena, now I've come home, I've finished the phrase, so they've put that C as like a foundation um, there. Then they're going, they all want me, they can't have me, so we're continuing each time. So they all come and dance beside me, now I'm home. Uh, and you'll see that pattern all the way through, that, that G's come up when they want the idea to continue. C's are telling me I'm always coming to a full stop or an end of phrase where, where an idea is finished. If we go to the chorus, They've done this slightly differently. They've gone C C C C C C C C C E G G. So G G again. We want to continue, but they're really, really hammering on the main note of the scale, the C. However, the end of every phrase is not a C except for the last one because the last one is complete. So they're telling us this is the key. Then they're going, but I'm going to put a G here to say I want to continue. Down in the second line, they put an E at the end of the phrase. I'm going to continue, hey, Macarena, and then I'm home. Okay, with that understanding, we should be able to put together our own melody. So let's go have a look at what this could possibly become with that knowledge in mind. So I'm going to use Sibelius for this because we are dealing with some elements of note reading and it's probably easiest to see visually what the important notes are when we're using a notator. If I was using one of the MIDI programs, I'm going to end up with those timelines with the little boxes and it becomes a little bit hard to see the relationship between where the sounds of the music are. I could always export my melody out of here and into another program um, as a MIDI file. So that's not a big deal to use a notator when you want to be quite specific about what notes you're going to use. So if it's a verse, we're going to practice the idea of coming to sounds that want to continue. So that G and the C, if we want to stop the music or have that moment where it sounds complete. And we want to be quite rhythmic and we want to be a little bit repetitive. Um, now, for any of you who write words, this is probably best to start with words rather than starting with melody and to fit your melody around your words. But I'm going to write an alternative version for Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, a pop version that does not follow the original melody. So I've got words, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Um, so 
So I'm going to go twinkle, twinkle, twinkle. Uh, so maybe eight notes. I'm using Macarena as kind of a little bit of a model on the quality of sound here. Twinkle. I'm going to use some lyric writing. Oops. Twinkle, twinkle, twinkle. Now, I was almost going to put a C there because in my mind that's what it sort of sounded like, but I'm realizing that I'm not going to be following my own rules if I do that. Twinkle, twinkle. I so I've sort of finished my first idea on an F, which is going to sound like it still wants to continue. The only point where I'm going to be in trouble is if I decide this is all going to have one chord because that's not going to fit into the C major chord. Again, I'll come back to chords later. So you've got twinkle, twinkle, twinkle. So uh, for those of you who are new to note reading, if you put a little connection such as a slur, that connects two notes together so they become one note. Um, so then I'm going to keep that pattern going. So I'm, I'm trying to make sure rhythmically it has a similarity from one part to another. And as I'm following my own rules, I want to come to a C. Now, if I were doing this and I wasn't following the rules, I might have done this slightly differently, but that's okay. Uh, and we've got an R. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. So at this point in time, you can see that I've avoided coming to my home note by finishing my first idea on a um, on that G. Okay, in the second part, I've intentionally brought it home, or the R R R. Okay, now all that's left to do is take my melody and pop it with a drum feel, so that I can get a sense for how rhythmically my words are working in with that style that my drummer is going to create which we worked on last episode. Okay, and remember, in a chorus, we can hammer more of those notes that come from our tone, our tonal center. So C is our tonal center, so we're gonna hammer, hammer, hammer those Cs just to really make people hear what key we're in. Okay, I think that is plenty for you to digest today because this is quite complicated and you really just need to go and play with these ideas and see if you can make sense of how to put these, some of these notes together to form some really simple melodies um, which, which use only a handful of different notes. Okay, I hope that's been useful for you, especially if you haven't had a lot of experience with this. It's quite a complicated uh, concept, um, but if you keep it simple to start with and then um, really build your ideas up as you get more used to using tonality, that'll be helpful. Next session, I'm going to go into the bass and the chords and how the relationship of the chords goes with our melody and the choices that we make in our melody. So, I hope you can join me. Thanks for coming along and checking us out. And subscribe if you like what we have to offer. Thank you again. Bye-bye. DM, developing musicianship online.